All right, hello, Algebra 2 kids. Today we're going to start a new chapter on sequences and series, Unit 8. And so first, um, there's lots of sequences and series in nature, and a lot of them follow something called the golden ratio. Like you'll see um, like a ratio of um, sizes, like you see here in this egg shape. Um, and you know, you can see this little plant growing, 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 kind of following a, a pattern in a way. Um, if you look at the cen center of a flower, say a sunflower, you will notice as you start to count the uh, seeds from the inside going out, it follows a special pattern called the Fibonacci sequence. If you follow the number of seeds in the little spirals that go out from the center. Anyway, so there's lots of, you know, sequences and patterns all around us. And so let's begin. So write down unit eight sequences and series. This is day one. So first of all, let's talk about what is a sequence. So the definition. A sequence is just a list of numbers. That follow some kind of discernible pattern. Now, it might be like an adding pattern or a subtracting pattern, multiplying or dividing, or it might be a more difficult pattern that you have to inspect a little bit more. But let's talk about some of those easier ones. First, there's could be just a general pattern that you notice. All right. So that's one thing. The second thing is it could be the ones that we're really going to study a lot more later are arithmetic. And arithmetic is when you have an adding pattern. Now it has to be adding the same number every time. Like if you keep adding five or keep adding a negative three, that kind of type of thing. And then there's also what's called a geometric sequence. And that is when you are multiplying. There is a multiplication pattern. But it has to be multiplying by the same number over and over and over again. So if you had a list of things like, let's say you don't write this down, but if you had like, let's say, you know, three and you multiplied it by two and you got six, then you multiply that by three and got 18. And then you multiplied that one by four and you got um, 72 and kept going like that. So, you know, you multiplied by two, then you multiplied by three, then you multiplied by four. That is not a geometric sequence. Um, a geometric sequence, you have to be multiplying by the same number every time. So it's like if you did three times two and got six, then you did six times two is 12, 12 times two is 24. So that's what I mean by, you know, the same number pattern that you're multiplying by. All right, so you don't need to know that just yet. So let's just look at, at a couple easy patterns right here. So here's my first example. Let's say I have 10, 14, 18, and 22, and dot, 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 dot. So those little dots right there means that I have an infinite sequence. I think one of your math-based questions is that if those dots are missing, that just means I stop at 22. But since I have dot, 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 it means I plan for you to keep going. All right. Um, so just take a look at that for a minute. Hopefully you can see it's going up and you see that I'm adding four each time. I hope you noticed. All right, so some things to notice here. Um, the first number that's called your first term. All right, and then of course you have your second term. and your third term and your fourth term and so on. All right, so the way that we're gonna name this is your first term is gonna be called A1, second term, A sub two, and this would be A sub three, A sub four, so that's a subscript there, all right? And when you write a formula like this, or like a, like a pattern like this, a lot of times you wanna come up with a formula for what's going on, formula for your pattern. And so when we write a formula for the pattern, we're going to call it this, a sub n. All right, that's the formula for our pattern. And the formula for this pattern, let me tell you, and you'll be, you'll be able to figure that out later, but um, a formula for your, this pattern right here is 4n plus 6. And so notice that what I have right here, if I plug 1 into my formula, like if I do a 1, I do 4 times 1 plus 6, well, guess what? I get 10. I think I ran out of space right there. If 
if I plug in 2, I do a sub 2, so I do 4 times 2. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a 2 right here in place of n, just like you do with f of x. All right, and then plus 6, so 8 plus 6 is 14, and look at that, I get the second number. And then, of course, if I get a3, uh, 4 times 3 plus 6, so 12 plus 6 is 18. And you could do anything, like let's say you want the tenth term. I could do um, a sub 10, that would be 4 times 10 plus 6, so that would be 46. All right, so it, the, the formula allows you to find any, any particular spot in the pattern that you want to find. All right, so um, that actually turns out to be what's called an arithmetic sequence. But again, you don't have to know that yet. We're just kind of starting off right here. All right, so let's look at one more real quick one. So let's say on this example here, let's say I had this pattern. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, um, 36, and so on. Let's take a look at those for a second. So I hope you recognize that those are all perfect squares, right? And so um, my formula for this is my nth term formula. So that's called your nth term formula. And again, you don't have to know how to make it up, but I'm just going to tell you in this situation it's n squared. So let's try some. If I did a1, that means I would do 1 squared. Well, 1 squared is 1. a2, that means I would do 2 squared. So it's like I'm just plugging in the number, kind of like, you know, when you do f of x, if you're given a function and somebody asks you to do, oh, find me f of 5. So it means you plug in 5 into the problem and get the answer. Okay. All right, so a2 would be 4. a3 would be 3 squared and so forth, so 9. And, you know, I could keep going, going, going. Okay, so that's uh, what your formulas might look like. And if somebody asks you to find the first few terms, you usually normally you're told when you're told you start with one, you plug in one, you plug in two, you plug in three, and so on. So we're going to calculate the first four terms of each of these next two examples. All right. So in example three right here, I want to calculate um, the first four terms. All right, and unless you're told differently, you just start with one. All right, so I got this this uh, pattern here, a n equals negative 3 to the n plus 1. And then next we're going to do this one, a n equals n plus 4 over 2 n. All right, so remember, these are just formulas. So all I'm going to do is plug in 1, 2, 3, and 4. So let's do a 1. So I have negative 3. I put 1 plus 1 there, so that's 2. So negative 3 squared, so that would be 9. And then I do a 2. So I have negative 3. I have 2 plus 1, so that's negative 3 to the third. So let's see. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. And then a3, I would have negative 3. 3 plus 1, it was b negative 3 to the fourth. And a negative 4 times is a positive. 3 to the fourth is 81, so I get 81. So as you start to do this, you're like, hmm, I think I see what's going on. You just multiplied by negative 3, and then you multiply by negative 3 again. So sometimes when you're doing something, you can tell yourself, oh, I know what's going to happen. 81 times negative 3 is 243, and it's negative. So negative 243. So um, at times, you can just tell what's going to happen and put the answer down. But to confirm it, I have negative 3. I have 4 plus 1. So I have negative 3 to the fifth, and if you put that in a trusty old calculator, you will get negative 243. All right, so there's the first four terms, just calculations, just plugging in. Over here, first term, I'm going to do 1 plus 4 over 2 times 1. So it looks like I get 5 over 2. Um, third one, I'm oh, sorry, why third? Second one, right? So a2, that would be 2 plus 4 over 2 times 2. So it looks like I get 6 over 4, which turns into 3 over 2, right? All right, so a3, I get um, 3 plus 4 over 2 times 3. And so it looks like I get 7 over 6. And a4, so I can't really tell, uh, I can't really find what's going on right here. Um, actually, you know, if I left it back in its unreduced form, look at this, 5, 6, 7. And the bottom is 2, 4, 6. I bet the next one will be 8. All right, and the top will be 5, 6, 7, 8. It'll probably be 8 over 8, which is 1. So let's check it out. So I have 4 plus 4. There's my 8. And the bottom, 2 times um, 
4, which is 8 again, so 8 over 8 is 1. So sometimes if you're lucky, you can see a little pattern and notice it. But other times, just plug some stuff in. All right. All right. So the next thing, the last thing we're going to talk about is what's called a series. So a series is when you take the terms of a sequence and you add them up. All right. So there is a definition for us, a series. It is the sum, because sum means to add up, the sum of the terms of a sequence. All right, so for instance, you know, in that first example that I had, I had one, oh, second example, sorry, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. That was the first um, five terms of that, that pattern right there. So if I wanted the series for this sequence, I would do 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 25, and I would add those up. Let's see, 1 and 9 make 10, 4 and 16 make 20, so that'd be 30. So 30 plus 25 is 30 plus 25 is 55, right? All right, so um, now it's a lot to, to tell someone to do that. There is like a special notation that you use and this is called sigma notation. All right, it's called sigma notation because there's a Greek letter that's called a sigma. So it looks kind of like a weird E, all right, like a really like, like a, a triangular E in a way. And so that right there is the Greek letter, capital letter S. And so I take it they meant it to mean the word sum. So when you see that right there, you're going to have some things around it. So I'm going to do it for this problem here. So write N equals one on the bottom and up top, put a five. And in parentheses here, put n squared. So what this is telling you to do, this part right here is telling you to do the sum. This piece right here, this is the formula for the terms that you're going to find. And then this is telling you where to start. This is telling you when to stop. So in this problem right here, when I see this, I'd be like, okay, let me start by plugging in one. I'm going to plug one into that. So one squared is one plus because it's telling me to do the sum. Then I keep going. I plug in two. I have to keep plugging in numbers from one, starting with one going all the way up to five. So when I plug in two, two squared is four. Then I plug in three, three squared. And I'm plugging into my formula. Three squared is nine. Then I plug in 4, that would be 16, and then I plug in 5, that would be 25. So I stop now because I'm at 5. And then I add them all up and I get 55. So when somebody wants you to do a sum like this, a lot of times they write it with this sigma notation. Okay, so we're just going to practice with a couple of those and we'll be done. Alrighty, so let's say for this example here I had a sigma notation. It says n equals negative 3 to 1. And then I have my formula here, 5n squared minus 2. All right, so all I'm going to do is plug in negative 3. I have my formula right here. I'm going to plug in negative 3 into that formula. And then I'm going to um, go ahead and work out. <sighs> so let's see, I got 5, negative 3 squared minus 2. So that's 9 times 5, that's 45, because 5 times negative 3 squared, so I do 5 times 9, so 45 minus 2, so 43. Then I have 5, and then I go to negative 2, because I'm, remember, I'm starting with um, negative 3, I'm going all the way up to 1. So that's squared minus 2, so it'd be 4 times 5, so I get 20 minus 2, so 18. And I do 5, then I go to negative 1 squared minus 2, so 1 times 5, I get 5 minus 2, so 3. Then I get 5, I put in 0 squared minus 2, so I get 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. Then finally I put in 1, so 5, I put in 1 squared minus 2, so it would be 5 minus 2, so back to 3 again. So I am adding up 43 plus 18 plus 3 plus negative 2 plus 3. And so that's what it tells me to add up. I'm going from negative 3 all the way to 1. So that turned out to be five things. So you add those up, you get 65. Okay.
And that would be all you have to do. All right, last one. Alrighty, so let's say in this problem I had a sigma notation. It says n equals 2 to 4, and I have 4 and then negative 3 to the n. So if I'm going from 2, then 3, then 4, I'm plugging in, I'm finding three, three numbers basically and adding them up. Okay, so I'm going to do, here's my formula right here. So when I plug this in, I'm going to do 4, negative 3, and I'm starting with 2. So I put a 2 up there. Then I'm going to figure out 4 negative 3, and then I'm going to plug in a 3, because remember, all I'm doing is plugging things in right there. And then I'm going to do 4, negative 4 to the 4th. So the only thing that's changing every single time is this piece right here, because that's my n where I'm plugging something in. All right, so I would get 4 times 9 here, which would be 36. Here I get 4 times negative 27, which would be negative um, 108. Then we get 4 times, and this would be 81. So 4 times 81 is 324. So all I have to do, that's a negative 108, I have to add those up. 36 plus negative 108 plus 324. So when I add those up, I get um, 252. Okay. And, you know, just if you wanted to, you could also, instead of, like, putting plus a negative here, you could just put um, 36 minus 108. So it's okay to have addition and subtraction if some of your terms are negative right there. All right, and that's it. I'll talk to you later.